this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn more about Northwestern and specifically learn more about early decision opportunities at Northwestern. We are going to be doing a student panel this evening to answer as many of your questions as possible. So please drop all of your questions into the chat. And like I said, we'll get to as many as we can. We will kick things off though with a round of introductions. So my name is Elizabeth. Bernstein. I'm a very recent graduate of Northwestern. I graduated from the College of Arts and Sciences this past spring, where I majored in neuroscience and minored in psychology on the pre-med track. And I love Northwestern so much, I'll be coming back in a few years to get my MBA from the Kellogg School of Management. But I'm joined this evening by so many wonderful students, so I will have Nolan kick off our round of introductions. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. My name is Nolan. I'm glad you're all with us today. I am a current fourth year studying theater, music theater, and political science. I'm from Evanston, Illinois, and I'm so excited to speak with you all today. So I'm going to pass it over to Kendall. Thanks, Nolan. Hi, everyone. My name is Kendall. I am a fourth year here at Northwestern, majoring in human development and psychological services with minors in Spanish and legal studies. I am from Winfield, Illinois, and one thing I do outside of helping the admissions office with our fun online events is I am a student ambassador for our study abroad office. I'm gonna pass it off to Julia. Hi everyone, my name is Julia. I'm a current fourth year studying in the dual degree program in the Bienen School of Music. My majors are music composition and learning and organizational change in the School of Education and Social Policy. I'm from Park Ridge, Illinois, which is super close to Evanston, and I'm really excited to be talking with you all today. Um, I will pass it on to Kayla. I'm going to jump in before Kayla here because I see she's moving at the moment. So uh, I'm a little older than most of the college students here. I'm actually Associate Director of Admission at Northwestern. My name is Chad um, and I'm responsible for recruiting students throughout the West Coast of the United States. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm basically here to make sure that if you guys have any questions about test option on about um, different deadlines or admission questions that we can kind of get all that taken care of. Um, I'm going to actually now see if Kayla is ready to go. Go ahead, Kayla. Yes, I can now. I'm so sorry about that, you guys. Hi, um, my name is Kayla, and I'm also so excited that you guys are all joining this Zoom today and that you guys are all learning about Northwestern. But I'm a third year here, and I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I'm studying biology and psychology on the pre-med track here at Northwestern, and I'm also receiving my minor in business. Um, so thanks, someone like it. All right, I think I'm the last one. Um, my name is Sanath. I am a third year student from Oakland, California. Uh, I studied computer science with a minor in psychology and a certificate in managerial analytics through the Kellogg program. Uh, when I'm not doing tour guide related things, I am the electrical lead for NASA student launch. As the name implies, we compete annually in a NASA competition where we launch a model rocket and then deploy some sort of ro robot when it comes back down. Um, I think Elizabeth, it's back to you. Yes, we will get started just by getting some of these technical questions we've already gotten out of the way. So Chad, could you start us off by talking about what it means to apply early decision and what binding means? What percent of students are accepted through early decision and if acceptance rates are different for different colleges? Yep, so uh, I'll try and remember all those questions you asked me, but uh, Northwestern has two decision deadlines. So early decision and regular decision. Unfortunately, we don't have an EA process or an ED2 process. Um, so students have two different opportunities to apply. So early decision deadline um, is November 1st. So um, it's you apply through the Common App, through the Coalition App. The application is absolutely no different than any other application, except there's one additional page at the end. And on that page, it says, if I'm admitted to Northwestern, I will withdraw all my applications from other schools where I've been admitted to. and um, you sign it and either your mom or your dad or a guardian and then your high school counselor. And so if you do get admitted uh, on through this binding program on mid-December, late December, when we let you know, um, you can um, take, you know, relax a little bit throughout your senior year. Um, and it is if you've already decided, you know, that you bleed purple or that regardless of where else you might be admitted to, Northwestern is your first choice. You're a great candidate for early decision. If you're still like in that position of you're trying to decide whether or not like Northwestern is your number one choice. Well, then you, this is panel is for you. And hopefully 
You know, we have students here who have been admitted early decision who were um, deferred early decision and admitted regular decision and students who applied regular decision. Um, so we run the gamut to try to um, hopefully like give you a little bit about each of those experiences. So we take about half of our class early decision. So our undergraduate population is 8,000 students. So that means we have about 2,000 students in each of our undergraduate years. So about 1,000 of our students are admitted early decision and about 1,000 of our students are admitted regular decision. Even with COVID-19, even with the changes that we've seen in the world, we don't anticipate that changing for Northwestern um, at, at this point. And, um, and we're, you know, our president is Morty Shapiro and Morty always says, we love students who love Northwestern. So there's no better way to, to demonstrate demonstrated interest and, and to show your exuberance for attending than to apply early decision. Now, in terms of you know, numbers, and I know people are wondering about strategy and that, is there is no difference in the academic profile between somebody we admit early and somebody we admit regular decision. Are the acceptance rates different? Yes, but acceptance rate, all it is, it's a, it's a product of how many people are in the poll, okay? And so that's all it is. It's, our problem is, is that we only have 2,000 beds for all the great students that apply. And we do have about 40,000 students that apply in a regular year. And it doesn't matter what mix we do between early decision and regular decision, we still only have that number of beds, unfortunately. So I think I got most of your questions there, Elizabeth. If there was something I missed, um, I'll come back and fill it in. But I definitely do want to, at some point during the hour, I'll talk a little bit about financial aid as well. Perfect, thank you so much for all of that, Chad. Our next question, we're gonna start off by talking about something that is really unique to Northwestern and is an amazing feature of Northwestern, which is the quarter system. Julia, you are a dual degree, so you're really taking advantage of the quarter system to the max. So tell us about the quarter system and how that's been advantageous for you. Yes, so Northwestern is really unique in that our school system is set up in quarters. So there is four quarters per year, the um, fall, winter, spring, and summer. However, that summer quarter is usually student summer break, a chance to have an internship, to go home and see family. So really what happens in each quarter is we take four classes on average, um, which totals 12 classes per year. That means on average, you're taking about four more classes per year as a Northwestern student, which allows a lot of room to uh, try out different things in different classes um, and really dive deep into areas you might not have the opportunity to on a semester system. So as a dual degree student, um, I'm able to study two different majors and get two different degrees um, by the time I graduate Northwestern. The quarter system is really helping me um, for two reasons. One, it's because I did not know exactly what I wanted my second degree to be when I came to Northwestern. So I took my first year um, to use those extra classes and, and find the major that really um, was a passion of mine. Um, but also, it's allowing me to complete my five-year program in four years uh, because I'm able to, to take some extra classes every year and um, really get my credits in when I want to. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Nolan, we have a question specifically for you. How did your interest in theater and your desire to pursue theater at Northwestern influence your desire to apply early decision? Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you to whoever asked that. That's a great question. Uh, I'll start with saying that um, I'm from Evanston, which I mentioned before. So growing up, I was able to be in productions here with college students. Uh, so that's how one, I got into the acting bug. And I knew that was something that I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And something I knew that I wanted to do in a university level and having done it with Northwestern students, I got to experience what that was like. Um, going to my senior year in high school, School. I was a cherub in the um, chair program, the National High School Institute. I was a theater arts cherub. And again, getting to experience that level of training in a collegiate institute like Northwestern and getting to see just how classes are structured, how the professors teach dance and acting and song because I did the musical theater extension as well, really got me to see and notice just how wonderful one being home away from home was and then I got to do something to this cal caliber at Northwestern uh, so after those two experiences I knew that there was no other school for me with what it offered in terms of theater music theater and as well as doing something else uh, so that's why I knew to apply early decision 
Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Nolan. Our next question is about the pre-med track. So Kayla, could you talk a little bit about the pre-med track and how the quarter system has helped you to navigate it? Yeah, so I think that one of the best parts about being pre-med at Northwestern is that pre-med is a track here and not a major. So that basically means that you are pre-med and you're also studying whatever it is that you're studying. So me, for example, I'm studying biology and psychology and I'm still pre-med. I have friends who are mechanical engineers, but who are pre-med, friends who are theater, but pre-med. Um, it really allows you to do whatever you want to study and then also have that feature of being pre-med and still going to med school afterwards. Um, Northwestern is super great at preparing us for med school. What it means to be on the pre-med track is that you actually receive a pre-med advisor. So that is someone who's there to make sure that you're taking your classes all at the right time, um, to make sure that you are studying for the MCAT and that you're registered for it, to make sure that you complete all of your requirements. Um, they also help you along with the actual process of applying to med school. Um, so there's someone who you can always talk to. You also have advisors for your major in addition to being pre-med. Um, so the Northwestern is really there to help guide you along your pre-med track um, into that pre-professional space. In the awesome. And you mentioned a little bit about advising. Sanath, could you talk about advising at Northwestern and specifically some of your experiences with advising in McCormick? Yeah, of course. Um, there's, there's, if you're looking for advising at Northwestern, you'll easily find it. I find my only issue with advising at Northwestern is that you get too many advisors. And I can sort of give like a full list of the amount that I have, but I'll just give just a, probably the ones that are most important for me. So if you are a freshman and you come into McCormick, you get a first year advisor. That's because every, every freshman um, or every first year in McCormick is an undecided engineer, even if your degree or your, or your system says something else. And the first year advisors are really great because during your first year, you get to explore different majors within McCormick and figure out what, what works for you. So for example, my first year, I was a mechanical engineering major. But then I took a couple of the engineering analysis classes, which is part of our first year McCormick track. And I realized maybe this isn't for me. So at the same time, I was taking computer science, a couple of computer science classes, and I was able to go to my first year advisor. And he helped me decide that, you know, in the end, computer science seemed like a better direction for me. So once you decide your major and you go on to your second year in Northwestern in McCormick, you get your major advisor in every department at Northwestern will assign you a major advisor for every major you have. So for example, I have a psychology minor, so I have a psychology advisor. Um, so that's just one sort of set of advising you can get in an academic sense. On a more social level, there's a peer advisor, which you get also as a first year at Northwestern. And this is an upperclassman that, guy, that you meet during Wildcat Welcome, which is our freshman and transfer orientation program. Um, and that they're, they're really useful because they help you navigate all the other non-academic things that go along with living on campus at Northwestern and being a student here. Um, outside of that, there's career advising. So Northwestern Career Advancement is the overall career advising center for the university. McCormick has its own career advancement center called Engineering Career Development. I think Mendel does as well, and some did, so do the other colleges. So that's just like a flavor of advising. If you're interested in almost anything, whether it be study abroad, research, um, majors, there's an advisor that goes along with that. And that's definitely something that you can pursue and help. And throughout your time at Northwestern, they'll help you make decisions that work for you. Yeah, that was a great segue into our next question, which is about transferring between undergraduate schools. So Kendall, could you talk a little bit about that and maybe some of your friends' experiences with doing so? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually pretty rare in the Northwestern world in that the major that I applied to is the one that I'm going to graduate with. Um, I added a couple of minors along the way, but I stuck with my major. So SESB, the School of Education and Social Policy, is where I applied into my major, Human Development and Psychological Services. When I was a first year, there were five of us <laughs> within that major. And that number has about, I would say, maybe tripled, um, probably even more so. I'm not even sure at this point within the years because people have been transferring into SESB. So what that means is that the transfer process is actually fairly simple between schools. Um, you're not bound to a certain major when you get here. Again, with the quarter system flexibility, it's pretty easy to catch up on the coursework. And as Sanath was saying, you have advisors that are making sure you're getting all of that, um, the required coursework done on time and you can still graduate along with everyone else. So for example, one of my really good friends, she came into Northwestern as pre-med, started taking a couple classes, realized oh, maybe pre-med's not exactly for me, um, ended up talking to some of her friends, talked to me and realized there were a couple of majors in SESI that were interested, that she was interested in. So she ended up transferring into SESB um, and now has a public health minor as well. So she didn't lose that part 
that she was interested in, in terms of the, you know, public health medicine field, but was able to kind of shift her focus and find something she really loves doing here at Sespe. Um, but that's the case for a lot of other schools, people transfer, um, all schools, you can transfer, d just cut sort of depending on what you're interested in and combining interests um, along the way. Another awesome part of the academic experience is also relationships with professors. Northwestern professors are incredibly accessible. And I think everyone on this panel could speak to that. But Nolan, would you be able to give some of your experiences? Yes, I would. Um, so yes, uh, Elizabeth is right. Um, one thing that's great about Northwestern is that the student to faculty ratio is six to one, which means that in almost any class that you're in, you're able to form a wonderful connection and a relationship with your professor. Um, my advisor in theater has been one of the staff members that I've been able to go to, of course, with help about um, curricular questions and just coursework and degree requirements, et cetera, um, but also to get advice on life. Um, one thing that I forget is that the adults here have been in our shoes before and they know what we're going through. So while their advice and wisdom pertaining to Northwestern is great too, they also have advice and wisdom pertaining to the world and adulthood. Uh, so I always turn to them for that. I've never had, uh, in my experience, I've never had a teacher where I didn't feel somewhat connected to by the time a class was over. That's because they make themselves accessible through office hours, always being on their computer to answer emails and just being a, a smiley and friendly face for students outside of class. Awesome, and part of what makes these professor relationships so feasible are really intimate class sizes. Julia, you can speak to quite a range of different class types and class sizes at Northwestern. So tell us about that. Of course. So I've had class sizes ranging from three students to a couple of hundred of students, depending on um, what the class is. Um, the the big intro classes um, that have that are more introductory um, usually have a little bit of a larger student community within them. Um, so your intro to psychology courses, your macro econ courses typically have 100, 200 students within them. And then as you become more focused in your classes, um, as you dive a little bit deeper into your major um, and you become a little bit older and are an upperclassman, then your class sizes become very small. Um, and and you're more with people who are focusing on the specific things you like to study, you like to research, um, all of that combined. Awesome. We've talked a good bit about what life is like inside of the classroom, but so much of what happens at Northwestern is applied learning and these really awesome experiences that you get to have outside of the classroom. Research is a phenomenal example of this, and there is no one better to tell you about it than Kayla. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have so many positive things to say about research here at Northwestern. That was actually one research and that was something I was able to do here within my first year on campus. So as a first year in the spring, I was actually able to get involved with research. It was super easy, super accessible. I just had a professor who also loved her research and she talked about it in class and I emailed her at the completion of the course and was like, hey, like, do you mind if I help you out in your research lab? She was like, yes, totally. We love having extra hands um, in the lab. So I was able to come in and help with her. She was doing a really research um, researching how if like by studying like the behavior of kids when they're young if she can see what kinds of personality developments and behaviors and possible um, personality disorders they might have later in the future and I thought that was super interesting as a psych major um, and then even this year I think do it's Alice? kind of step oriented oh you're back go ahead <laughs> oh sorry Am I, okay, sorry about that. If I keep going in and out. Um, a lot of the research that I'm involved in has been very STEM, kind of something that a pre-med would find themselves in. But there is also research in all different kinds of facets here at Northwestern. So you can be in School of Communications, you can be in political science, you can do research in all different areas. Um, I have another friend named Catherine who is studying political science and she's doing research to see if based on your demographics, like where you live, um, what gender you are, what race you are, if you can predict how you're going to vote in the upcoming elections, which I think is super cool. 
Um, that's just another form of research that happens here on campus that's not necessarily STEM and like a lab with like goggles and a lab coat that you might typically think of. Awesome. And another really great category of applied learning that we have at Northwestern is study abroad. Obviously, the world is a little bit different right now than when it than what it was, Kendall, when you went abroad. But tell us about your experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Study abroad was one of my favorite parts of my college experience. Um, definitely influenced what I did when I came back to campus, as well as, you know, changing my outlook on the world. I had never been outside of the country before. I was super nervous. I had to apply for a passport and a visa. Um, but we had a great study abroad office and study abroad advisors that helped me through that process help me figure out where to go. Um, in terms of the actual coursework and the things I did when I was abroad, there are a couple of different ways that you can go abroad. There are programs that are directly sponsored through Northwestern. So those are taught with only Northwestern students, Northwestern professors, Northwestern official coursework. The only difference is they're not actually on campus at Northwestern. There are also affiliated programs which are not run through Northwestern. They're run by other outside entities, but Northwestern has given you the okay to go on those programs. That's one of the programs I did. It was through something called the School for International Training. Um, and we ended up, I studied in Bolivia and Argentina. So as a Spanish minor, it was a great way for me to practice my actual Spanish skills in the real world. I lived with a host based family, talked pretty much 24 seven in Spanish, did all my coursework in Spanish, um, which was a really cool way to apply what I've been learning and seeing in my classes here in Evanston out in the real world. Um, there are also other ways to do study abroad that don't involve you know, classes in traditional coursework. You can do research abroad, like Kayla was talking about. There are a lot of other ways to do research. Some of that involves going abroad. Um, we have one specific grant here at Northwestern called the Circumnavigators Grant, where you can apply to study and do research in five different countries across three different continents, sort of whatever topic you wish. Super cool. I know someone applied and got their grant to study um, music festivals, which is super cool. They got to spend their summer um, studying different research festivals across the globe. So not only is there specific, um, you know, academic programs you can do abroad that sort of enrich your learning and connect things, what you've been learning at Evanston to the broader community, you can also do research. Um, I will also say in terms of accessibility that your financial aid travels with you. So if you're receiving financial aid here at Northwestern, that aid will be proportionally applied to the cost of your program. Um, so it's successful for you to go abroad. It's not, not any more expensive than it would be staying here on campus. And um, Kendall, thank you so much for that. That was a really great transition into talking a bit about financial aid. Aid does travel with you wherever you go, but I'm sure you may be wondering how that aid is calculated and what that looks like for students. So Chad is going to walk us through that. Yeah, so before I was an admission officer, I was a financial aid officer for five years. And I understand that, you know, next to buying a house, um, a college education is the, is the second highest expense that a, that a family will have. Um, and so uh, I just want to make sure that you guys understand for, for us, um, there is no difference between a type of financial aid package you would receive in early decision versus uh, another aid package you would receive in regular decision. So how does financial aid at Northwestern work? And I'll try and keep this really simple. Um, so we have two kind of guiding principles in the admissions and financial aid office. And so the first is um, we have a need blind admission process. So when you apply to Northwestern, if you're a U.S. citizen, a permanent resident, a dreamer, or a DACA, or an undocumented student in American high school. Um, when you apply to Northwestern, we have no idea if you've applied for financial aid or not. Once you've been accepted, we have a need-based financial aid program. So what does that mean? That means that we will meet 100% of your demonstrated need and get this, we're gonna do it without loans. There are only about eight, maybe 10 schools in the entire country of the 3000 different colleges that there are that are able to meet every student's demonstrated need without packaging loans. So that means you will graduate from Northwestern with zero debt. We don't want students to have to choose between doing, you know, um, Teach for America or the Peace Corps or the Marine Corps because they have a lot of student loans to pay back, okay? So um, here's one way you can find out how much it costs to send your child or for you to go to Northwestern. So every school in the country is required by the Department of Ed to have a net price calculator on the homepage of their financial aid office website. So if you just go to you know, financialaid.northwestern.edu um, and we're gonna have a net price calculator, it's a simple button you click on there. I know we're gonna drop this into the chat as well. Um, and so if you sit down with your, with your guardian, your parent and their 1040, in five to 10 minutes, you're gonna have a concrete answer as to how much we'll expect you to contribute to the cost of your education at Northwestern. Um, and that, that's, it's, it's nice. 
we, we try and keep it as simple as that, that that net price calculator really does work. Granted, you will still have to file your forms and you will get your financial aid package when you find out whether you've been accepted or not ED, whether you've been accepted or not in RD. Okay. And, um, but that aid package, like you can do that net price calculator now. It's going to be the same whether it's early decision, whether it's regular decision. And then the other question I know that comes up is say you don't get a chance to use that or, or you're not sure or your family situation has changed. We understand right now that with COVID-19 and the pandemic that family situations change and it might not look similar to how it looked when you did your last tax return. Okay, so there's one room for additional information and two, we have a reconsideration process. So if you get accepted to Northwestern early decision and then mom and dad get this financial aid award package and are like, I don't know if we can do this. The first thing you need to do is you need to get in touch with the financial aid office. They're open every day, central time, 8.30 to 5 p.m. They'll take your phone call, they'll talk to you, they'll do a reconsideration of your package with new information or other information that you might not have been able to share, we might not fully comprehend. They'll get back to you with an, uh, a new offer. It, and hopefully it will be better, especially if there's some extenuating circumstances we don't understand quite fully. Um, at that point, if it's still something you don't feel like you can do as a family and you've applied ED, we will release you from that binding agreement. Now, last year we admitted about a thousand students. And of those thousand students that we admitted, there is less than a handful of students who after they worked with the financial aid office were not able to come to an agreement or, or a feeling of, of comfort with their financial aid package. And it was, might've only been two or three students and they were released from their ED agreement. And then they can go off and find another college in regular decision. But um, I just like to allay those fears about, um, oh, aid packages are different or we give more money out in ED. Our aid budget this year, we're, we've already spent $207 million in a single year on undergraduate financial aid. And as this pandemic changes, that's probably gonna go up even more. So um, hopefully that's enough there uh, on financial aid. And I do see, did see one other part of that first question you asked me, I didn't fully um, answer. And that was, are acceptance rates the same for different schools at Northwestern? And yes, with the exception and caveat of music being slightly different. And the reason is, is because you have to demonstrate a high level of proficiency with an instrument in one of our, you know, 30 plus performance areas. So even though the School of Education and Social Policy only enrolls 40 or 50 students and uh, first year students and the, you know, the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences admits probably about a thousand, there's similar numbers of students applying to each of those. And, you know, maybe 20, 25% of our students will switch schools at some point during their four years. And so we really do you know, embrace that undecided culture. And our most popular major for first year students, once again, is undecided. So, okay, I've been talking long enough, Elizabeth, you can take it back. Okay, thank you so much, Todd. That was incredibly helpful to break down and kind of demystify the financial aid process. We're going to move a bit now into student life at Northwestern, which is an incredibly exciting aspect of our community. So Nolan, could you just talk to us generally about student life on campus and kind of what's happening on campus day to day? Maybe like pandemic and also not pandemic. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, well, student life is great here. I um, just focusing on campus life because that ties into student life. I've been on campus every year since I got here um, and I've lived in a residence college. So just in terms of the student life and community within that residence college, Willard, um, it's insane. Uh, there are people always hanging out together, doing homework together, um, doing things on the weekend with each other in our common spaces. This is pre-pandemic um, and just having movie nights and just having fun. Um, Right now, um, it, it's still the same, of course, not to the capacity it was before the pandemic, um, but we still have community events in the dorm. Um, we have what's called a faculty in residence, um, which all residents, re residential colleges have, and they create community with the residents off campus before the pandemic. 
even now we still have Norris, but before the pandemic, um, people used to hang out with friends in Norris, do homework in Norris um, on every floor from the third floor source all the way to Norbucks on the second floor. Norbucks is Starbucks in Norris. I'm sorry, uh, Northwestern lingo. Um, and we used to do things on the weekends as well, either go to um, sports games, football games, basketball games with each other because students get in for free, or we go into town and see a movie or go to a restaurant. Um, it's very lively. Student life is amazing. And even that we have student organizations and activities, which is um, a, a program here. Um, they have their office in Norris and they plan events for students during the weekends, whether it's going to a Broadway show in Chicago or going to see a movie. Um, there is an abundance of things to do in terms of student life on campus. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. And Julia, I know you were on the board of New Student Family Program. So can you talk about how students make friends, how they meet other people, how they find clubs um, and kind of how clubs and orientation have been running with COVID? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I um, was a director on the Wildcat Welcome Board of Directors. So that orientation program that was mentioned earlier, um, I helped direct this year, which was very exciting. Um, during that orientation experience, um, there are many ways in which you are transitioning into the Northwestern community. Um, there are organization fairs. Um, there are many different programming events that you're able to attend to learn about different areas of Northwestern's community um, and to really find where you're able um, to, to feel most comfortable and make Northwestern home. So beyond uh, the organization fair we have every year at the beginning of the school year where um, each organization has a booth or a table and um, you, can, you can find the ones that speak to you most. Um, there are also orientation programs for our identity organizations as well. So the Multicultural Student Affairs Office, um, our Religious and Spiritual Life Office, um, many offices around those types of campus community also present programming, which are able to find communities that you connect with. So um, someone mentioned also your peer advisor earlier. Your peer advisor is an upperclassman who's really there to be a peer first and foremost to help you trans transition into the Northwestern community. They can speak to their experiences and also their connections and their friends on campus and really help find those organizations that speak to you most. Um, lastly, there's a lot of residential programming during Wildcat Welcome, during your first year, during any, any year that you're living on campus like Nolan just mentioned. Um, residential life really creates um, a, a community for you to live in. And so whether it's hanging out in those, in those common spaces or it's um, going to uh, a fun dining hall event or it's doing something fun that your residence assistant is putting on for your floor, um, there's lots of ways to get to know people just on a one-on-one -on -one context outside of classes, outside of student organizations, and just to have a community um, there for you right where you live. That was all incredibly helpful. We've thrown the word campus around a lot and I do want to be cognizant of the fact that many of you haven't had the opportunity to visit campus in person um, and our campus is incredibly beautiful. That being said, we do have incredibly robust campus tour programming on our YouTube page. We have new campus tours that go live every single Wednesday, one that went live, I believe just a couple hours ago. We have STEM focused tours, athletic tours, arts tours. So please, please check those out um, and make sure that you are using all the resources at your disposal to get familiar with Northwestern. A big part of campus is also all of our campus traditions. So Sanath, what are some of your favorite campus traditions? Right, there's a lot of campus traditions that I really enjoy. I think my favorite one would have to be Armadillo Day, which is you known by the students as Dillo Day. Dillo Day is the largest student-run music festival in the country. Um, it happens every spring quarter about oh, the week before finals. Um, so it's, it's your kind of your last hurrah of the school year, I would say. Um, and we have, we've had some really amazing artists. We've had um, ASAP Ferg, Kendrick Lamar, Young the Giant, just to give you like a taste of, of the big name artists that we've had. And I think it's something that the entire Northwestern community really comes out and shows out for. Um, it takes place on this beautiful part of campus called the Lakeville. The weather in May is gorgeous in Evanston. Um, and I, I love live music. So there's, there's, some, there's nothing to not like here with, um, with Dillo Day. A couple of my other favorite traditions would be half, 
would be like the Big Ten sports. Um, Northwestern is the only school in the Big Ten where you can get into any of the home games for free with your with admission with your wild card, which is your student ID. Um, and that, I've taken advantage of that um, in years past, pre, pre-pandemic. Um, football games in the fall are definitely one of my favorite things to go to. Um, it's so it's, it's a little bit of a long march to Ryan Field, but it's for sure a fun one with your friends, cheering the fans with your favorite Wildcats. And at least my my first year at Northwestern, Northwestern went to the Big Ten Championship game where we put up a, a good fight um, against Ohio State. Um, and the cool thing about that is that we actually got to go for free. Um, an anonymous donor paid for that. So that shout out to the, to the Wildcat Alumni Network um, for supporting one of many, many Wildcats' favorite traditions. Um, and that's just a, just a small taste. On campus, you can see the rock, which is always a great barometer um, of student life. So the rock is, um, and you can go to, you can check this out on YouTube as well if you just look up Northwestern Rock Cam. It's um, it's a rock where you where you have to guard for 24 hours and then you get to paint something else on it. I'm trying, I'm speeding through the story right now. Usually there's a long backstory, um, but it's really cool. So to guard it for 24 hours and get to paint your own thing. And I think it's really cool to be able to see like what's going on around campus. Like, is there a big uh, performance this weekend? Is there a sports game? Um, and I think it's just a really neat part of campus that you get to get to see what's going on with student life. Um, I really encourage you to check out that live cam. Yeah, we have so many awesome traditions and it's not only touched on the tip of the iceberg of everything that Northwestern has to offer. He also touched briefly on our alumni network, which is something that I want to talk about really quickly um, and is addressing one of the questions that we got about how involved is the Northwestern alumni network. As someone who is now part of the Northwestern Alumni Network, um, I can kind of vouch for both sides and saying that especially as I went through my job recruitment process this past year, I could not have done it without the support of Northwestern alums. I know that I had connections at certain companies and those connections helped to connect me to other people that I never would have had access to without those initial Northwestern connections. And undoubtedly that is how I got many of my jobs and why I ultimately chose to go with the job that I did go with. And now as an alum, um, I love, I've had a lot of students ask me about my process with recruitment last year um, and I've been really happy to be able to kind of give back and keep giving the Purple Pride forward to current Northwestern students and kind of just keep helping. I know I love Northwestern so much and so many of our alum did that they are always eager to continue to be involved with the Northwestern community. We've talked a lot about life on campus, but campus is just one of kind of three parts of our location trifecta at Northwestern. We are located in the city of Evanston, which is incredibly essential to our campus environment. So Kayla, could you talk to us about what there is to do with Evanston, Northwestern Evanston relations, and just kind of how that helps to enhance the Northwestern experience? Yes, I agree with you. I think Northwestern does kind of have a trifecta of location um, because first of all, you do have Northwestern's campus, which is, it's a cute campus. It's easily walkable. It's maybe like 20 minutes tops from top to bottom um, if you are walking through campus. Um, But that's great. It really feels like you're at college here. There is kind of a Northwestern bubble where you are just only seeing students on this main stretch of where we live. There's like dorms spread all throughout campus, classroom buildings and stuff like that. But then you walk just like five to 10, maybe 15 minutes off of campus and you're in downtown Evanston, which is a lovely little suburban Midwestern town. Um, There's lots of places to eat. There's like a little like psychic downtown. There's a movie theater that's open um, when there's not currently a pandemic happening. Um, There's lots of places to shop. Lots, like I said before, great places to eat. Um, There's like 10 different coffee places like within like 15 minutes walking distance from campus. So if you're like me and you like to study in a coffee shop, um, there's definitely lots of avenue for that here too. And then if you walk like 10 minutes, you can hop on a train and then find yourself in the city of Chicago, which is really nice um, because we have this great, huge city um, that has something for everyone. So whether you're into like food, music, culture, art, um, Chicago definitely has something for you. There's always something happening there. Um, Additionally, I feel like there is a pretty nice relationship between Northwestern and the Evanston community as well. I'm a part of a club here on campus called Mini Chefs, where we go into downtown Evanston in Chicago, into the, the local high school or the local, I'm sorry, elementary schools, and we teach little kids how to cook. Um, so everything we teach them is like nutritious and vegetarian, and that's one way that I, as a Northwestern student, get to also engage with the.
Awesome. And Kayla briefly mentioned on the third mentioned the third part of our trifecta, which is of course the city of Chicago. I absolutely loved being in Chicago. And Kendall is going to tell us a little bit more about opportunities for fun and professional opportunities in Chicago, as well as how Northwestern kind of sets students up for success to engage with those things. Yeah, absolutely. I'll start with the fun parts of being near Chicago first. Um, so it's actually pretty easy to get down to the downtown part of Chicago. Um, we're only about a couple miles from the city limits, but I know a lot of students like to go down to the downtown area. We, there's the art museum, um, a lot of different parks, concerts downtown. Um, you can take Chicago's um, network. It's basically the subway, but it's all elevated trains, the L. Um, there's a couple stops right along the Evanston campus. I actually, I, in my off-campus apartment, I'm only a couple blocks away from one of those train stops. So super convenient to get down there. We also have our inner campus shuttle, which connects the Evanston campus to our Chicago campus. Um, which is where the law school and the med school are. And that's free for students if you show your student ID. Super quick, drops you right off um, in the heart of Chicago. So there's always amazing cool things to do in Chicago. I personally am on a mission to find the best tacos um, somewhere in Chicago. I have a couple of running lists, been to a couple of places, but there's always more to explore. Um, in terms of the professional opportunities in Chicago, there are a lot of internships, different companies, different ways to get involved with the professional world in Chicago. For example, for me, um, the School of Education and Social Policy has a part of its curriculum requirement where students do a major, but or, or sorry, they do an internship for their major requirement. So you earn credit while you're working um, somewhere, wherever you choose. So I did mine actually in Chicago. Um, I was basically working a nine to five job, but earning class credit for it. I got to take the train every morning into the city, work in an office building um, and learn so much about you know, the professional world. I had support from the Northwestern community the whole time. Uh, people looked over my resume. I had a mock interview with my advisor. So I felt really prepared to go into this sort of professional world in Chicago, commute with other people wearing, you know, suits and had briefcases. Um, it was a really cool experience and something I don't think I would have had um, if we didn't live so close to Chicago and it wasn't so accessible and um, students really, you know, try to get down there and um, expand our world beyond the little Evanston bubble. Awesome. And Sanath, as our only non-cold climate person on this panel, can you talk to us about the weather and your experience coming from California? Yeah, gosh, um, the weather was definitely something me and my, my mother worried about quite a bit um, when, when I decided to apply to Northwestern. Um, so so it's, it's the main thing that I think people need to consider is that Chicago has always been cold. Right, and so for someone like me from California, where I like to do a lot of the, a lot of the activities I, I enjoy are outside. Chicagoans and Evanstonians and Northwestern Wildcats know how to have fun indoors during the winter. Um, so whether this just means like hanging out in one of the museums downtown, the museum on campus, um, or just hanging out in your dorm, um, Wildcats know how to have fun. And I think when it comes to just like staying warm, I can give you just like good life advice, which is like buy a nice coat, buy like warm pants, things like that, buy good boots, and you'll be totally fine because you're just walking between classes um, I'm an engineer, which means I spent a lot of my time in the Technological Institute or tech as it's known to the students, which is fun fact, the second low, second largest low rise building in the United States, which is kind of crazy. So, but you, what that means is that you get to spend all your time indoors. There's like a land bridge sort of to, to the engineering library. And there's also um, an, another one of those to the, to the design building right next to it. So I get to spend a lot of time indoors. Northwestern is designed um, for the indoors. And one of my favorite parts of campus is the Nor Nora Student Center, which has been alluded to a couple times. So the, the Student Center um, and Nora Bucks, which is the Starbucks and the food court, which is on the downstairs, is a great, is like the hub uh, of student life on campus. And during the winter, especially, there's always tons of people in there. It's very lively. Um, there's, there's nooks and crannies where you can go study. There's great restaurants like Mod Pizza where you can get lunch with a friend. And I think it's a great, great place to spend time during the winter. Um, and from a warm climate, like I, I honestly thought it'd be worse, like really, um, it's not that bad. <laughs> I promise we have nice weather in the spring and the fall. Um, and the, and it's not like it's the, it's the end of the world for winter at all. I, I really enjoy my winter quarters. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing all of that. We are going to do a fun popcorn round now talking about kind of a quick favorite thing about student life at Northwestern or a favorite student org that you're involved with. So Nolan, do you want to go first? Oh man. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, student org that I absolutely love. Uh, the WAMU show. 
Kendall, you can go next and then we'll popcorn. Yeah, I think my favorite club is Happiness Club, which is sort of as it sounds. Um, students do events that are basically just designed to make you happy. Um, they're doing like a Halloween movie marathon every night until Halloween um, in the next few weeks. Just little things that make you smile and sort of de-stress from, you know, being a student. Julia, you go ahead. So beyond being a peer advisor and in directing Wildcat Welcome, um, I really love Studio 22, which is Northwestern's premier production company. Um, I've been able to score a movie through that organization um, and it was premiered and that was just a really exciting experience. All right, I'll go next. Um, I alluded to this earlier, but NASA Student Launch, which is with this bigger organization at Northwestern, it's kind of a mouthful, but it's NU STARS, that's Northwestern University, Space Technology and Rocket Society. So we're, we're an aerospace related group. Um, and I just absolutely love my time. There's something about being on a project team where, where you build, spend all year working towards this competition. Then you get to see your thing literally reach the atmosphere. That's really rewarding. Um, and I've learned a lot. I made really great friends. I absolutely love being part of NU STARS. Um, I think Kayla, I think you're last. Yeah, so I guess I'm a blast. Um, one of my favorite clubs is Club Triathlon. And like, I was never a triathlete before coming to college. Um, but I have so much fun with the team and they really have inspired me um, to get out and like run and bike and swim and exercise. And we have little mini triathlons also that we host. So that's one, like, one of my most favorite and fun things that I do here on campus. Awesome, thank you all for those fun popcorn answers. Before we close out with our classic Why Northwestern and also a question many of you have asked, which is why did each of you apply or not apply early decision? We've also gotten quite a few questions about the Why Northwestern supplemental essay, as well as a few other admissions questions that Chad is going to address for us. Yeah, I just wanted to hit a little bit about the Why Northwestern essay. I actually think that it's more important than the Common App essay. And I think it's harder to write, even though it's shorter. So Common App essay somewhere around 500 words, whereas the Y Northwestern is 250, maybe 300 words max. So um, I think it's a lot easier to write a lot rather than to write something really sharp and focused. And so, you know, I already know that we're a mid-sized university located on the shores of Lake Michigan um, and that your favorite color is purple. Like, we don't need to know any of that, okay? So I think a lot of times my advice is, better to tell you what not to do rather than what to do. But if I had to tell you what to do in just a couple sentences, I would say, focus on how Northwestern can help you get to where you wanna be academically four years from now. And what are the opportunities and resources that you can see yourself taking advantage of to become the successful person and successful graduate that you wanna be, okay? Um, and I, I do think that even if you're undecided, there is so much that the, there's a wealth of, of opportunities and, and things that you can discuss, especially if you're undecided, because you can take the time to explore their curriculum. You know, we have 190 majors and 4,700 classes and the opportunity to still double major or get a minor and a certificate, regardless how long it takes you or how many times you change. And so that there's a lot to, to grasp on there with that. Um, but then at the same time, the other thing I like to close out with is just I know that it's it's not been anything like you thought your junior year spring and your senior year would be like right now. And if there's one thing I would I would tell you to do, it's focus on those things that you can control and try and like don't worry about those things that you can't control. Like we have no idea how this um, virus is progressing or strengthening or weakening and moving and things like that. And you know, all I know is there's no school that anybody is going to this year that is normal, okay? And so you still can control your grades. You can control your focus in your classes. You can control, you know, how much effort you put into writing that Why Northwestern essay. So please try and do that and, and not worry about those things that you can't control, like how many people deferred or who else in your class is applying where, when, or, you know, like how many days a week am I in school and is it asynchronous or synchronous and things like that. Um, so that's my final plug. And then the other thing I always want to mention is we are a Questbridge school and we are a Posse LA school. So if you are one of those students that is just finding out whether you're a Questbridge finalist or not, um, or, you know, you're in the Posse selection with Posse LA, if 
for some reason you become a finalist and you don't ultimately match with Northwestern or get selected for Posse LA as a cohort of part of the students that are coming to Northwestern, even though it's still gonna be several weeks after the early decision deadline, you have the ability to switch your application from regular decision to early decision for those of you who aren't selected as part of the match or part of the Posse cohort. And, um, and we'll throw an email address in the chat as to where you can email us at to ask more questions or to do that switch. So thank you for that last plug, Elizabeth. Of course. So now we're gonna close out with the ultimate most important question, which is why Northwestern and for each of you, why did you choose to apply early decision or why did you choose to apply regular decision? Because we do have both on this panel, which is really interesting. So Kendall, do you wanna start us off? Yeah, absolutely. So I was sort of struck by Northwestern the first time I set, uh, stepped foot on campus. Um, I also sort of knew what I wanted to do, but wanted the flexibility in case I changed my mind. Like I said, I'm the rare breed in that I stuck with my same major all my through my four years. So I knew that's what I kind of wanted to do when I came into Northwestern, but I also really appreciated the flexibility to know that if I did change my mind or if there was something else I wanted to do that I could add it and it wouldn't be, you know, weird or looked at strangely. Um, but the advisors really were there to help me and guide me along the way. Um, I actually met with an advisor in the SESB office as a prospective student and she was just so kind and so helpful and then remembered me when I came back here as a student. So that just sort of warmth and guidance was a big factor for me in knowing that I would be supported in whatever I chose. So I applied early decision to Northwestern, but I was deferred. So what that means is I got my uh, decision back after the early decision deadline and Northwestern said, we're not gonna accept you quite yet. You'll get another decision um, in March with the regular decision folks. So that was a bit of an emotional roller coaster for me because I was so set on Northwestern and was so excited to apply early decision. Um, and then was sort of like, oh, wait, maybe, you know, my top school, like, what am I going to do? Um, but I really was still committed to Northwestern and knew that it was going to be the best choice for me, kind of based on what I already said. Um, so I didn't lose hope. I reached out to people in the admissions office, you know, sent more emails, um, connected with my regional director, said I was still interested, all that kind of stuff, and then eventually got accepted in that second round. So just if you're interested in applying ED, know that that could happen to you. But if Northwestern is really your first choice, it will, it'll work out. So I'm going to pass it off to Sana. Yeah, thanks, Kendall. Um, if you if you are considering Northwestern as a high school student, chances are you are a high performing high school student. And there are there's a lot of great colleges out there. I might be a little bit of an anomaly because I, I came to Northwestern's campus. I didn't immediately fall in love with it. I didn't fall in love with any of the colleges I visited. And, and the, play, the thing that really switched my mind here was Northwestern.edu because I'm a person that likes to wear a lot of hats and I like to explore a lot. So like I wanted a college where flexibility was really key and that you could explore different academic programs. And like during these information sessions, don't get me wrong, they're super helpful. I enjoy doing them, I think they're great, but you don't get to hear really detailed like information on, on like specific programs that you might be interested in. And that, all that information is found on the website. So I went on to Northwestern's website. And I just explored programs that sounded really cool. Like one of the ones that caught my eye was the Kellogg certificate for undergraduates and now I'm doing it. Um, but some other ones that, that interested me were like the entrepreneurship certificate, the design certificate. And these are things that like, if these sound cool to you, just like based on the words I'm saying, like, please go look them up. Um, so, so Northwestern was like by and far, like the place where I thought I could explore the best. Um, I love cities. I love exploring cities. Chicago is right down, down a few stops on the L, you know, so I can go and explore that if I want to. So it just kind of checked off all the boxes for me in that regard. And, you know, if these information sessions aren't exactly like, wow, Northwestern, like, please check out the website. Cause I'm, I almost guarantee you that you'll find something that will wow you. And that's why I ended up EDing here and ultimately getting accepted. And yeah, now I'm loving it. So uh, Nolan, why don't you go next? For sure. Yes. Yeah, so um, as I said before, I'm from Evanston. So for the longest time, I didn't think Northwestern was a school for me. I needed to get away, uh, far away from Evanston, but I'm glad I made this decision because it was the best decision of my life. Um, why Northwestern specifically? It had everything I wanted, not only to help me grow as a person and an, or a student and an artist, but as a person, um, I could... I uh, have the greatest um, theater and musical theater training while also not needing to sacrifice that in order to do something else. Um, 
Plus, I, I love this city, so I thought, why not Northwestern? And um, why I applied and I got accepted early decision. Um, actually, I was just featured on the Northwestern admissions page with a huge blurb about it, if you do want to read more about why I chose early decision. Uh, but just quickly to sum it up, it, um, it had everything I needed, and I knew the search was over. Um, I said it's you know similar to buying a new house or, you know, buying a wedding dress is, you know, if it feels good while you're in it and it has everything that you need more than the other places or dresses you were looking at, then, you know, it's right for you. And Northwestern was that for me. It had everything I wanted as a student and a person. Uh, so that's why I played early decision. Uh, and I'm going to pass it to Kayla. I don't believe you went yet. I haven't gone yet. Thanks, Nolan. Um, that's so funny that you mentioned the wedding dress. I feel like in my why Northwestern, I mentioned like a wedding ring, like I was proposing to the school. Um, but I applied, decided to apply to Northwestern for so many reasons. So first of all, I like had a whole list of things. I'm definitely all about lists. And I knew that I wanted a school that was in the Midwest, so I'd be kind of close to home. I definitely wanted a school near a big city because I'd kind of lived in the suburbs my whole life. And I really wanted to be able to explore and like see some other things. I wanted a school where I could um, thrive and do research. Um, I would, that was something that was really important to me coming in. And I also wanted somewhere that would like really prepare me for med school. So Northwestern checked all of my boxes and like, that's great. Um, a lot of schools check a lot of boxes. Um, but what really sealed it for me was that I was able to come to visit the campus and I got to meet some of the students and some of the professors here. And that just, and also like my tour guide when I toured the campus as well, everyone who I met was so passionate and so excited. And they also had passion for many different things. And I'm someone who loves to get involved. They love to get my hands dirty. I love to be active in so many different areas. Um, there's so many different facets to me and to find students and professors who were so excited and also who were providing opportunities and getting able to partake in opportunities that really encapsulated all of them was just made me realize that this was a school that I definitely wanted to attend. Um, and so after I visited Northwestern that second time and got to meet with the students and professors, that's when I officially decided, I told my parents, I was like, I'm applying early decision to this school. I have to, um, this is definitely where I want to end up. Um, and that's like Nolan said, or I ended up mentioning um, the ring, the wedding ring in my, my Northwestern application. Um, so Julia, I think you are the last one to go. Yes, thank you. So I applied regular decision, um, mainly as, as a music student applying to the Beaton School of Music. It just made more sense for me to apply regular decision with all of my supplemental music um, audition requirements. But nonetheless, um, when it came down to it, Northwestern was my school for two main reasons. So the first is the dual degree program and the flexibility like many of my peers have talked about. Um, the ability, I went to a performing arts high school and I had passions for music and business and the ability to be studying both and to um, have a lot of support from both sides of faculty, my music and my business faculty, um, or LOC faculty, excuse me, um, to, to really dive deep into two different areas and to find ways to cross them together in my academic studies was really exciting. Um, and then also all of the advising and resources that I receive as a student here was the biggest thing that that sealed it for me at Northwestern. So um, like somebody mentioned earlier, you have an advisor for virtually anything you are interested in at Northwestern. And as somebody who's a music student and really thrives off of those private lesson atmospheres and that one on one atmosphere to know that I would have a resource in a one-on-one -on -one atmosphere for, once again, virtually anything I was interested in really gave me the support and the encouragement to do that dual degree program and to really um, dive deep into the many academic experiences I wanted at Northwestern. Awesome. Well, thank you all so, so much for sharing your Why Northwesterns with us. Thank you for answering all of our amazing questions. We know that the early decision deadline is coming up in about a week and a half, and hopefully this has been very helpful in getting your questions answered. But if you still have additional questions and you are still making that decision, we want to help you make as informed of a decision as possible. Please check out our YouTube channel. We have tours, we have panels, we have school specific sessions, we have pretty much every resource you could need. And if you still have questions, we want to provide that support to you. So please look up our purple preview program. We'll drop a link to that in the chat as well. If you'd like an opportunity to speak one on one with a current Northwestern student, again, do not hesitate to reach out. We are here for you and we want to help you make the best decision for you. With that being said, thank you all so much for taking the time out of your evening to join us. 
Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or afternoon, evening, whatever it may be. And as always, go cats.